Sean, you were very honest at points last season in saying this is the worst campaign I've ever put together. This year is different. You're getting back to the heights that have taken you to a triple crown. Excellent win in China. You had three finals and a bounce. What's clicking again this year that was missing last year? I think it's been a, it's difficult to put my finger on one thing. Um, but I sat down at the end of the season and at sort of the start of this season and tried to work out what aspects of my life from a more holistic point of view, all of the things I'm involved in and a couple of other business interests that I have. And I was a player commission representative. I was a board member of the WPBSA. Um, you know, I was only practicing four or five days a week, not on a Saturday. You look at all of these things and think, right, which of these things are, are helping me? Which of these things are potentially hindering me? What can I do? What, what can I do differently here? If I keep doing the same thing, I will keep doing getting the same result. And so I changed literally everything. I now practice more. I practice on weekends, which I've never have historically done. You know, the winning trophies. They, the trophies don't know that it's a Saturday. Um, so I'm still going practicing. Uh, I'm very lucky to have a very supportive wife and a very you know someone who enables me to go to do these things. Uh, I resigned from the WPBSA board reluctantly uh, and I resigned from the Players Commission again reluctantly because I considered it a real honour and a privilege to represent this game and represent my other members and try to make this game better for them. Uh, and you kind of take a view on what's adding to your life and what isn't. What's a distraction and what isn't. And that's probably holistically the, the, the sort of way I've gone about it. It sounds to me as though you recognised you were being spread too thin. Mm. Because also, apart from all those commitments, you're trying to be a father and you're trying yeah. to be a husband. Yeah. Very difficult. Um, you know, and if you could give 100% of your life, as I did as a young boy, to snooker, I had no commitments, no responsibility, that's great. And as you get older, you amass these... Ultimately, they're things that distract you from that goal, but they're obviously much more important, having children, being married, relationships, all of those things, you know, trying to hold down. It's all very important, but it all just nips away at how much energy you can put into what's supposed to be one of the most important things in your life. And with some very strong words of sometimes quite confrontational, but, you know, people who were trying to help me, Fergal O'Brien took me aside and gave me a real stern dressing down as a friend and said, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Chris Henry, back in my corner, we need to change this, we need to change that. You've slipped back on doing this. And then, you know, I've got my wife at home, you know, saying things like, you know, we believe in you. Let's come up, let's get, you know, let's go. Let's keep the positivity, keep trying to achieve. I'm very, very fortunate to be in that position. I've got some excellent, great people around me because there were some very dark moments last year and in the previous season where I could have easily, if I'd had anything to walk away to, I would have walked away. So therefore, how satisfying was it to take your first ranking title in just over, what, two and a half years and in a decider against Mark Williams? That, that could, from what you're saying and the position you were in at the start of the season, that could turn out to be a highly significant victory when we look back on your career in many years' time when you've retired. I went back to my room and had a good cry. Really? Because it was... It was there were some times last year and in the season before where I really considered my future as a potential winner of snooker tournaments. Yeah, I would have kept my tour card and I would have stayed on, but there's, you know, when you rock up to an event, some people are just looking for a paycheck, whereas some of us are looking for trophies. And there was a, 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 there was a while there where I, I really had to look myself in the mirror and say, do you think you can do this anymore? Have you, or have you become one of the many? Uh, and that was a very uncomfortable conversation to have. And I had it, I had it with other people. And their belief in me was probably what carried me through because my belief in me had gone. Uh, my get up and go had gone up and gone. And their fire, their belief really kicked me up the backside. And I owe it all to those people I mentioned. He's the magician, Sean Murphy. Absolutely thrilled to be in the Welsh Open 14 years after my first 
attempt at winning this great tournament, it would be an absolute thrill to lift that wonderful Ray Reardon trophy. I think, you know, we're all here, we're all trying to win. And I think if you can't get yourself up for a final of an event, you know, then you're definitely in the wrong job. I can't wait to get out there and play. I'm really excited to be in another final and uh, hope I win. <laughs>